Hi, this is BIMGeek. In this video, we're going to be creating floor finishes by room boundaries using Grasshopper inside Revit. So to be able to use Grasshopper inside Revit, you must have Rhino 7 installed in your device and have a compatible Revit version installed, meaning I think it's up 2018.3. So you must have a version that is after 2018.3. I'm using Revit 2022, by the way. So uh, the workflow that we're going to follow is quite simple, actually. First, we're going to read the floor finish parameter of room elements. Then we're going to read the type mark parameter value of floor types and match the order of these two lists. And then we're going to create our floor from room boundaries and set their offset values so they don't intersect with the structural floor. So in this tutorial, I'm actually using a user object that I created. So this uh, user object uh, gives the boundary of the given room elements. So you can access this user object as well as the model that I'm using for this tutorial from the GitHub page, a link to that in the description down below. So let's get started. So the model that I'm using for this tutorial is actually a quite simple model. I have a couple windows, couple doors in place. I have rooms, rooms inside rooms. So for instance, this room's floor will have an opening inside of it. So if I examine one of the rooms, you can see that it has a floor finish parameter value as FK2. So if I go through my floor types and their type mark value, for instance, this one's type mark value is FK3. So this one's type mark value is FK2. So this room will have this floor type. That's what we're going to do in Grasshopper. So if I go through my room schedule, you can see that I have 13 rooms and each room has value of one of FK1, FK2 and FK3. So let's get started. I'm going to head over to Rhino Inside and click on Grasshopper. The first thing that I want to do in Grasshopper is I want to get all the room elements in here. So I'm going to search for query categories first and connect the rooms string to the name input. And this will convert the given string element into a Revit category. If I connect this to here, you can see that this is actually a Revit category. What I want to do is I want to get all the elements that belongs to this category. If I search for query elements, you can see that this actually expects a filter. So what we need to do is we need to convert this category into a filter. So I'm going to search for category filter and connect this to here and this to here. Now if I connect my panel to the elements output, you can see that I got all the Revit elements, room elements in my model now. So what I want to achieve is actually I want to get the floor finish parameter value of these elements. So there is a node called element parameter. This is like really a magical node. This gets and sets the parameter value. So if you want to read the parameter value, you just connect it, connect the parameter. If you want to set the value of that parameter, you connect a value to the value input. Since we are searching for the floor finish parameter, I'm going to connect this to here and if I connect the panel to its value you can see that I got all the a floor finish values in my Revit rooms. So what we have achieved so far is we got the floor finish parameter of the room elements in our model. So the second thing that I want to achieve is I want to get all the available floor types in our document. To do that first we need to get our category. I'm going to search for query categories and then I'm going to type in floors as the name input. And now we need to convert this category into the type. So we need to get all the available types belong to this category. I'm going to search for query types. And as you can see, we can connect a category as an input. So I'm going to search this. I'm going to connect this category as an input. And if I connect a panel to it now, you can see that I got the Revit element type. So these are all the available Revit floor types in our document. So basically what we want to achieve is 
we want to get the type mark parameter value of this floor types. We're going to do the same thing as we did in floor finishes. I'm going to search for element parameter. I'm going to connect my type. Since this is a type parameter, I am connecting a type as an element input. And we are searching for the type mark parameter. And as you can see, we get the output as FK1, FK2, FK3. Other floor types didn't have any value in their type mark parameter. So basically what we want to do now is we want to get the index value. We want to get the index value of each of these items in this list. To do that, I'm going to use a node called member index. So our set of elements is this. We're going to search through this list and we want to get the index of these items. And if I connect this to here, and if I connect another panel to here, you can see the FK2's index in this list is six. So sixth element is FK2. FK3 is seventh, FK1 is fifth element. So what I wanna do is now, I wanna convert this index into a element type. So what we are doing is actually we are getting the floor finish parameter into a floor type. So I'm going to use the list item node for this. And from this list of floor types, get the floor type at index this. That's what we're seeing now. And if I connect this to here now, you can see that we have actually converted this FK2, FK3 strings into a floor type by matching the order of these two lists and using the list item method. So now what I want to do is I want to get the boundary of my room elements. And as I said at the beginning of the video, we are going to use a custom node that I created for this specific purpose called room boundary. So I'm going to search for room boundary. And since these are my rooms, and if I connect this to here, this will actually convert these room elements and give their boundary as an output. And if I open my Rhino now, you can see the boundary of our room elements. And if I connect my panel to the output, you can see that it gives a polyline curves as a list of lists, as a data tree, sorry. So now is the exciting part. We're gonna create our floors. To create our floors, we're gonna use a node called add floor. So this node expects a four input, boundary, type, level, and whether if the floor is structural or not. Since our floor is not structural, we're not gonna connect anything to here. Our floor types are right here, as you can see, our floor type. So I'm gonna connect this to the type inputs. And level, I'm gonna search for levels picker node, which will give me all the available levels in our document, and I'm gonna select one of them and connect this as the level input and our boundary will be the output of our custom room boundary node. And if I connect this to here, and if I go back to my Revit project, you can see that all the appropriate floors are being created. But we have a problem. These floors are intersecting with the structural floor. So we need to offset each floor by their thickness value. So in this part, what we're going to do is we're going to set the height offset from level parameter as the floor thickness. Let's just do that. So I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to search for elements parameter magic node. Elements parameter. Our elements are created floors. The parameter that we're looking for is height offset from level. And what will be the value? The value will be the thickness of each floor. So we need to get the thickness of each floor. To do that, we're gonna use element parameter again. So I'm gonna search for element parameter. I'm gonna connect the floors as the elements and we are looking for the thickness of each floor. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna type in thickness. And 
If I connect this to here and connect the panel to the value output, you can see the thickness of each floor. Some of them are 3 cm, some of them are 4, some of them are 5. And if I connect the value output as the value in the height offset from level parameter, if I connect this to here and go back to my Revit model, now you can see that all the floors are being created and their height offset from level parameter value is being set. So in this video, we have created floor finishes by room boundaries using Grasshopper Magic inside Revit. If you have any feedback or recommendations for a future tutorial, let me know in the comments section below. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.